Hello drafters. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the BQ Panda Status LED bar into the Bamboo Lab X1C 3D printer. I'll cover the whole process step by step, starting with what files to download and 3D print, followed by how to physically install the status bar into your 3D printer, and then finally how to log in and configure it. First, a quick word from our sponsor, and then we'll continue into the tutorial. So stick around. Have an idea you want to bring to life? PCBWay makes it easy to turn your designs into reality. They're best known for high quality, affordable PCB prototyping and assembly, but they do a lot more than that. Whether you're into electronics, 3D printing or product design, PCBWay offers CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and even 3D printing services. That means you can get a full project made from circuit boards to custom enclosures all in one place. What I really like is their quick turnaround. Upload your files, choose your specs, and they'll get it manufactured and shipped fast without cutting corners on quality. Plus, they have great customer service if you need help with your order. So if you've got a project idea waiting to happen, check out PCBWay through the link below and see how they can help you build it today. One of the first things we need to do is get the 3D printable files for the Panda status bar PCB board and also for the Panda branch if you got that as well. I'll leave links in the description of the video to these wiki pages. Otherwise, just use Google and search for Panda Status wiki page and you'll come to this page. So on here, it will explain how to install it, which is what we're following today. So you just want to scroll down and you'll see the print models for PCB casings and you can go to GitHub or MakerWorld. I prefer MakerWorld. And same thing for the Panda branch. You can go to this page and all the way down the bottom is the printing parts for the enclosure for the Panda branch. Again, either GitHub or Maker World and either for the P1 and X1 series or the A1 series. This video is just for the P1 X1 series, so that's where I'll go in this case. Over on Maker World, this is the Panda status shell or enclosure for the PCB board. There are a few options here for printing this. In my case, I believe I use the USB on the left because if you're looking at this image, the cable comes through and then it goes into here. So I'm assuming this is the left side. That's where I want it to come from. This is where the PTFE tube comes in and then goes around to the print head. So I think just open up in Bamboo Studio and it's either the left or the right version. I'm not sure why you use the right version. Maybe you want the cable going out this way and to somewhere else. In my case, I want it coming through there. So I'm pretty sure I selected the left version. And then again, over on Maker World for the Panda branch enclosure, I just printed out the first one. I didn't need anything fancy. And both of these prints are quite easy. They only take maybe an hour or something or a couple of hours, and they're quite easy to assemble, which we'll jump over and I'll show you the assembly now. Now that we've got our parts printed for this job, we have the prints for the actual PCB board, which is in the Panda status. And we have the prints for the Panda branch, which I'll explain why you need this in a moment. So first we put our prints aside. Let's take a look inside the boxes of these two items. So we'll start with the Panda status. So this is the status bar, obviously. When we open this up, you'll have cleaning cloths and adhesive alcohol. There's some cables for powering the device. There is the PCB board that it connects to, which we'll need to install into the 3D print. There's some adhesive backing tape, which will go onto the Panda status. And of course, the main item itself, uh, there's just some more adhesive backing. And this is the Panda status bar itself. So you can see the, the BQ logo on there, some protective film, which comes off. And it's a really nice design, very slim line, very high quality. And it looks like it has some backing tape already installed on there. So this is probably backup tape in case you have some problem installing or if you remove it and put it on another machine, you've got some extra there, which is nice. These are little tape pads that you use for holding down all your wires because this is a bit of a DIY installation job. So it's not the cleanest install, although once we get into that stage, you don't actually see much of it in behind the printer, but these little tape pieces will just hold down any of that wiring around the frame of the printer and just make it a little less noticeable. So we'll put all this aside. We'll just keep our two main components. So our Panda status bar and the PCB board. And this box is our Panda branch. 
So this just comes with some fasteners, cable, and the Panda branch itself. I'll explain why we want this soon. Okay, let's first show you how to install this PCB board into the 3D print. So you should have this little 3D printed enclosure. It's quite simple. All it does is drop in. The main PCB side will just go down inside like this. Just be careful of this part because it's very thin and fragile. You don't want to force it in and snap it. So I'll probably do that side first and then just push this down into place. This way I'm not putting pressure on that tiny little piece at the end of the board and snapping it. And I'm pretty sure that will be the antenna or something. So we don't want that broke. There is also some holes there. So make sure they're all the lining up. And then we take our back plate. You'll see it has some little pins that should align with those holes there. So it's a simple process of just pushing it in place and giving it a good squeeze. Overall, it's a pretty good fit. Sticks out a little bit, but I think because I used PETG for this print, because it was going inside the printer and I was a little concerned about the heat and it seems that the tolerances were a little tight for mine, but that would be fine. It's not gonna cause a problem. This is a little spring loaded mechanism. So when you put it inside, it just kind of squeezes and releases inside and holds in nice and tight. So I don't expect that be moving anywhere. And you can see we have our two points for cable entries. So we have one on the front here and a little USB one on the side. And there's also, it looks like reset switch inside here, little pinhole button. For our Panda branch, we need to also put this into our 3D printed enclosure. This one is quite simple. You can see it should just line up in one particular way like that. So you'll have your USB ports or your four pin connector ports, and that's pretty much it. And then this will only go on a certain way as well. And it just should go together like that. And there are a couple of fasteners we need to put in place for this one. So I believe there is one at the top here and there's one at the bottom and it should just use these small ones. We need to drop in our screw here and here, make sure it's aligned and just gently screw these in because it's only using plastic material to engage the fastener. So you don't want to over tighten this and end up ripping out the threads. Just hand tighten it down until you feel resistance and that's all you need to do. For the next part, we need to attach these two parts together and you can see there is two holes on here. There's one there, there's one on there and there's one here and one here. We don't want to be putting it this way because obviously we can't access those areas. We want it more like this. The USB is down the bottom, four pin ports at the top. And we will use our short screws again for this one. The long screws are going to be used for this when we actually attach it to the back of the printer. So again, using our smaller screws, they just drop in. It might be a little bit tighter due to this printing in the orientation it did. So just start the engagement and leaving a little bit of room for it to continue. And then we can line up one of those sides there. Do the same for the other side. Again, making sure you do not over tighten these. You can tell when it needs a bit more because it still feels a little bit wobbly and but eventually it will feel very hard to turn with your hand any further. That's all you want to tighten it to. Don't want to go beyond that point and it shouldn't have any wobble in it anymore. It should feel nice and solid. So there you go. There's our Panda branch all ready to go. We don't need to thread any wiring or anything like that show you how to install that to the back of the printer soon using these two fasteners and why we need this. Next thing we need to do is start installing our Panda status bar to the printer itself. So let's jump into the printer and start installing this. Now onto the actual installation of the Panda status bar. The first thing you want to do is get access to your X1C printer. So I recommend turning it around so you can easily get to the back of it. Also ensure that you turn it off first because you don't want any power going through it. To start, you want to remove any PTFE tubing from the top and also remove any fittings by pushing on the little blue clips. For the inside, you need to first remove the blue pin collar and then you can remove the tube by pushing in the, the pneumatic fitting. This will allow you to push in the fitting and remove the tubing. Just be really careful not to drop it like I do here. Luckily, it didn't fall too far and I found it. You then need to remove the rubber tube guide. It's a bit of a pain, but just force it out as there should be a replacement in the BQ kit. Taking our 3D printed enclosure for the PCB board, we then need to push this down and then push it in so that it locks into place. Take the USB cable and thread this through the back port that we just opened up and plug it into the PCB board. 
With the new tube guide, you'll notice that it has a small notch cut out, which is where our USB cable will fit through. We need to reinstall this rubber tube guide. Just work your way around the edges, pushing it in as you go. And I also found using a flathead screwdriver can also help just work your way around the edges. Now we take the other connector cable from the kit and the black adhesive tapes. Plug in the connector to the PCB board and then guide the cable along the frame of the printer and use one of the adhesive tapes to secure this cable in place. I found it helped to start on the bottom edge and then lift this over to secure the cable into place. We continue to route the cable through the frame you can kind of push it into the little clips where the other cable is running. We then use another piece of tape and put this just beside the poop chute area to hold the cable down. Drop the cable under the heated build plate and take another piece of tape and stick this to the back wall of the printer. You can now take this panda status bar and connect the other end of the cable to it. Remove any build plates as they might get in the way of the next step. Use the alcohol pad to clean the front surface of the build plate bed. This will remove any contaminants or dirt and then use the microfiber cloth to dry the surface. Remove the backing tape on the adhesive pads of the status bar. This part, take your time, just carefully align the status bar in place and then push it in place and hold it there so that the adhesive pads can bond. Work your way around the status bar and ensure the corners are also stuck in firmly. On the underside of the build plate bed, we need to place a couple more pieces of adhesive tape to hold the cable down. You can put one across this bar here and also one in the corner while leaving a good amount of slack for the build plate to travel up and down. To finish the installation, we can put the fitting back on the PTFE tube that goes to the hot end and then feed this tube through the rubber guide, then reattach the fitting to the end. On the inside, slide the fitting back down towards the end and also ensure that the blue clip is back in place as well. And then reconnect any of your AMS or buffer tubing. So you may be wondering, how do we power the status bar with this USB cable? Well, that's where the Panda branch comes in place. So first, remove any screws from this location if you have some, which I believe is usually reserved for the side spool. You can then fasten the Panda branch in place using these points. To wire this correctly, we need to take the power from what was going to the buffer to now go to the Panda branch in the top port, which will be labeled in. So the buffer or AMS will now be removed from the printer and connected to one of the out ports of the Panda branch. And we can use the cable that comes with the kit to connect from the printer to the top in port of the Panda branch. So this is how the power is taken from the printer to the Panda branch and then distributed to the other ports. Use any cable ties you might have around to just clean up the cable work behind the printer. The final step is turn on the printer and if everything is connected, you should see the Panda status bar turn on. If it isn't, ensure that all your connections are correct, but if followed these instructions, you should be good. Don't forget to reinstall any build plates that you might have taken out. The first thing you're going to need to do is connect via Wi-Fi to the Panda status bar. And you can do this by using your computer or mobile phone to connect to that hotspot. Now in my case, you're not gonna see it. I'm connecting to it off screen. So here's some instructions here. So you just open up your Wi-Fi panel and then you can search for the hotspot, which should be Panda status, something that's like a long number. So you connect to it and then it will ask you for a password, which the default password is 987-654-321. So, so connect to that network, enter in the password, and then you can proceed to the next step. So that might take a moment, but give it a sec. If it doesn't work in your PC, try your phone. Either way, it should work. Once it is connected, you won't have internet, but you can connect to the Panda status system by using this IP address. So it will be 192.168.4.1.1. Dot one. And if the device is either reset or operating for the first time, you should see this screen. It's gonna ask you what your preferred language is. In my case, it's English, and then you go next. So it will do a Wi-Fi scan and then it will say it's okay. So it's just gonna see what Wi-Fi networks it can see around you. And in my case, this is my office Wi-Fi. So you select that one and then you enter the Wi-Fi password and then hit connect. It should say that the Wi-Fi connection is successful. And if the Wi-Fi connection is successful, it will then want to bind the printer to this page. So in our case, we do want to say binding. So we can click on that. We can drop this down 
Well, first we'll do a scan. Once the scan is complete, you can click OK. And again, we can drop that down and I can see my printer is selected. So I'm not sure if this is scanning the network that you're connected to and finding any bamboo printers on that network. And that's why it's discovered my X1C or if it's going to pick up multiple. So what I'll actually do, I'll turn on my A1 and I'll just see if it actually picks that up as well. All right, my A1 is now turned on. So we're gonna give this another scan and just see if it does pick it up via the network connection or whether it's actually picking up the, the printer that the Panda status bar is wired into. So let's give it a moment and see what happens. Looks like it takes 40 or 45 seconds to do the scan. So we're gonna hit okay. And as I suspected, it does actually search for the Wi-Fi network that you just connected to. In my case, it was my drafted Wi-Fi, which is what all my Bamboo Labs are connected to. So you have to be careful because it will actually connect or bind to the printer that you select here, but they could be connected to your network. And it's not giving you particular names. It's just saying what model it is. So if you had multiple X1Cs, you could have a whole bunch in here and you wouldn't know which one to pick. So I recommend turning off any other printers that are connected to the Wi-Fi network that you're planning to operate from. So in my case, I know which one it is. I know it's my X1C, so I can just click on that. It looks like you can possibly look at the serial number as well and identify what printer you're actually connecting to if you had multiple X1Cs, but otherwise um, just be careful with that. You may want to turn them all off first and just simplify so we also need an access code, which we're going to need to go to the printer to go and get. So once you have your access code, put that back into this page here and then click on bind. And that will say that the Panda status has been bound to this printer. Please check whether the light bar of the Panda status bar is displayed and then hit OK. So now that the Panda status bar is all set up, we can actually go through some of the pages here. So first, if we look at the control panel, we can see that we've got our device selected and it's currently set to music. You can probably see that it's reacting to my voice the whole time while I've been talking. So if you're playing music or anything or making loud noises, it's going to react to that such as this. So I'm sitting across the room and it's picking it up that noise pretty well. And that's a pretty cool feature. Now, another one you can do is drop it down and select H2D. So this is going to show similar status like the H2D does, which is built in with its own status light bar. Now you can change things such as changing the idle color to something else. So you can change the idle color, you can change the printing or the error. Uh, it's totally up to you what you want to do. Next is our settings. So we can see our firmware version. If you want to update with the new firmware, you can go to the BQ website or the wiki page for the panda status, find the bin file and then select here and upload it. Now we've already come from the printer page, which is this one where we bind it to the printer. We then have our Wi-Fi settings. So this allows you to log into this Bifrost engine page without having to connect to the hotspot. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And then we have our access point details, which is how we originally connected to the status bar. So let's go back to the Wi-Fi and I'll show you what this is. There's two things here. We can either go back to our normal internet connected Wi-Fi, which is for me, the drafted Wi-Fi network for my office. And then you can connect back to the Bifrost engine and change things like colors and such by using this new IP address in our window. Or we can simply use the host name, which would be pandastatus.local, or you can change this to anything else, like you can change it to draftedpanda.local, whatever you want it to. So let's try that. I'm going to switch back to my drafted Wi-Fi, which is off screen, but I'll do that now. And you can see that it's actually saying that something's happened to the connection because I'm switching off the hotspot connection and it's not gonna find this page now. So we're going to copy this and just go pandastatus.local and it should connect back to here. So here we are. It doesn't ask for a password, so I would be a bit cautious on that. Obviously, if anyone's connected to your Wi-Fi network, they can just jump straight into this and change things on you. Otherwise, just make sure no one's aware of your settings. You could create a custom name so no one knows that. Final thing to do is have a look at what our settings are. So music is obviously what I've just shown you. It's going to react to music. And we have the H2D set status as well. So I'm going to leave it at that. Maybe run a print and we can watch the status bar fill up and do its printing while we finish off this video. So that brings us to the end of the tutorial. I know it was a long one, but take your time and I promise you it's not that bad. 
If you are at all interested in BQ products, I recommend checking out the link in the description of the video because that will take you to the affiliate page where it doesn't cost you any extra, but I'll get a small kickback and that helps support the channel. And I really appreciate that support. So I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and thanks for watching.